This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform to build your online presence. Well, ahoy there, cruisers, and welcome on board Royal Caribbean Symphony of the Seas for our epic 4,600-mile journey from Miami to Barcelona. And we're going to show what it's like to be stuck 10 days at sea with no ports on one of the biggest ships in the world. Yeah, welcome aboard Symphony of the Seas. As Ben said, we're taking this big old ship all the way across to Barcelona, stopping at Malaga and Valencia. It's going to be a 12 night cruise all together. So we're going to have plenty of time to check out what Symphony of the Seas has to offer. But honestly, before we do anything, I need my coffee. You know me guys, I need 16 to 17 coffees just to function. And we need some breakfast as well. So let's go find somewhere to eat, shall we? So obviously on a big ship like Symphony of the Seas, there are so many places to eat but it is very, very busy because they are sea days. Everybody is on the ship. I think there's just over 5,500 people on board this cruise, so it is a lot of people. We just checked out the Solarium Bistro, but it is absolutely rammed. It is so, so busy in there, no seats at all. So a bit chaotic. So we want to go find somewhere a little bit quieter if we can. <laughs> If you want to keep the kids occupied, or Ben and I, you can play music on the stairs. These staircases are actually a musical staircase, so when you walk up and down, it plays a tune. So cool. I'm going to do it again. You ready? <laughs> That's brilliant. So we've came to the main buffet, and this is also very busy, but we have bagged ourselves a table. We just had a walk around and eagle-eyed a table that had been vacated and swooped in. And we've got a little spot for our breakfast. All the usual breakfast selection that you get here on Royal, it's always a good selection. They do have lots and lots of choices. So it's a great option for breakfast here in the buffet. So David's went to grab some drinks while I keep this table because it will be taken if you leave it and don't leave anything on it. It's about 100 degrees in here. It's quite chilly outside today, but for some reason it is literally so hot, I'm sweating. Anyway, let's go get some breakfast, shall we? need that coffee immediately. We are really moving. I don't know if you can see um, out of the back window here, but we are, we have got a lot of motion. And for such a big ship, we are really surprised as well, because usually these are like tanks. You don't feel a thing, but we are swaying. And I do feel a little bit green at the moment. Oh, so we got our breakfast. As David said, it's a nice big choice up there. There's lots of different things, lots of eggs, sausages, bacons, all of the American stuff. But for the life of me, I couldn't find any croissants. And I got loads of ham as well. I had like a ham carvery station, but it touched my donuts. So I've got a hammy donut. And that ham was really, really delicious as well. The bread's really good as well, but I've got to try this donut, a white chocolate sprinkled donut. I think it matches my personality. Let's have a try. Delectable, moist, soft, cushiony, sweet. Mmm, it's gonna put a smile on my face. Delicious. I got quite a colorful plate. I got some salmon, eggs, fruit, of course a little hash brown as well. But I've just realized my salmon is frozen solid, positively chilly. That might be why it's so warm in here, Ben. They're trying to defrost the salmon. Yeah. Because it's absolutely frozen solid. I also got my favorite avocado on toast. I've missed this. They didn't have any of this on Disney or any of the other cruises. So I'm so happy to see you little avocado on toast. Yum. Yeah, so overall that wasn't a bad meal. It's just a little bit chaotic in here and busy. It's because everybody's on the ship, so it's a little bit crazy at the moment. People everywhere, the food looks a little bit messy in places as well. You can get an omelette made as well if you fancy that as well. But yeah, lines and queues and just slightly chaotic. Just be aware of that, especially on a transatlantic where it is busy. And this cruise is especially busy, like we said, with over 5,500 people on it. It's a lot of people to feed at once, especially when every single person's on the ship and hungry at the same time. Oh, I'm gonna get out of here now, it's too hot. Oh my gosh, we are swaying like crazy up here. Remember, the front and back of the ships and the higher up you are, the more bouncy it's gonna be. So if you do get seasick, go down and in the middle, it's always better. Right, let's go find something to do. So I think one thing people think about on a transatlantic cruise is that there's not going to be much to do and you're going to be bored, especially with 10 sea days. This is a long one. This is quite unusual. The, the, the itinerary on this cruise isn't that great because we only stop at two ports, Malaga and Valencia. Usually a transatlantic will stop at some other places like the Azor Islands in the middle of the Atlantic. Uh, well, one activity you certainly can do a lot on your cruise is drink coffee and we are going to be doing that. We found a new little spot, the Vitality Cafe. 
We didn't know that they served coffee in here, but they do. They serve the same types of coffee as Cafe Promenade. So the Starbucks that isn't Starbucks, but is included on the drinks package. That kind of coffee, if that makes sense. So we've came here, grabbed a coffee. You don't just get coffees in here. They also have fruit juices, healthy juices, power aids, sort of things that healthy people have after they've been to the gym. So that's probably why we have never been in here before, but it's a good little spot if you do want a coffee and Cafe Promenade is busy, so yeah. And it's about three steps from our cabin, fabulous. Yeah, I gotta say, I wouldn't know anything about healthy stuff, would you? But yeah, it's really weird. So this coffee from Cafe Promenade in here, which you have to pay for as well, it's the specialty coffee. It's Starbucks, like David says, and it's included in the drinks package as well. But the actual Starbucks coffee from the Starbucks shop isn't included in the drinks package, so it's super confusing. No idea why. Save yourself some money if you've got the drinks package and just drink the coffee from one of the cafes. It's just as good as Starbucks, trust me. I'm so happy I have my coffee. Oh, it's the best juice ever. So the thing about Transatlantics is that they can get very bumpy and it is quite bumpy today. So do be prepared by that. So bring some medication with you. And we always recommend booking a cabin in the middle of the ship lower down, like we said earlier on, because there is less movement. But yeah, it is quite wavy. Oh, anyway, we're gonna go and try and find some trivia to do. Yep, so we've came to Dazzles, which is kind of a two-story venue where sometimes they have live music, where they're doing a daily progressive trivia. This means it's a trivia every day and the points get added up. But oh my gosh, like breakfast, it is rammed in here. We're about 25 minutes early and there isn't a single seat available. It's a bit annoying, guys, it really is. Everywhere we've been this morning has just been completely rammed because we love doing trivia. I mean, we'll stand up and just do it because we're not that bothered about sitting down. We're gonna sit down most of the cruise, but yeah, just bear in mind, places do get very busy. So if you wanna do anything, get there super early. So we found a seat on the floor. Lots of people are sitting on the floor. Our cruise director said it's the busiest he's ever seen this before. So let's play. Well, that was fun, wasn't it, David? We got 15 out of 20. We ended up joining a lovely team as well, which was really nice. So the six of us, and yeah, we got five wrong. Some of the questions were very tough. Yeah, so progressive trivia goes over a couple of days, which means that you add up your score from today and then again tomorrow and the day after to get your final score. We do recommend going in a team of six because like Ben said, the questions are quite hard and they're very varied as well. So you do need people with different specialities. Hot chocolate, wow. That's a lot of hot chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny, they're going around with a hot chocolate cart. Love that, I haven't seen that before in Royal Caribbean. That's great, isn't it? But yeah, it's super chilled out here at the moment. It's very quiet because the weather isn't great and those pools are closed. But I can see the Brits are all still sunbathing because it's warmer than home for sure. <laughs> Ooh, my hair's looking a bit crazy today, guys. It's a bit windy. Anyway, we've came to the very front of the ship. This is the adult solarium. So it's for 16 years and older. So if you're younger than that, you can't get in here. There's loads of comfortable seating, a couple of whirlpools and a big pool at the front as well. It's really lovely, super quiet. And it is shaded by the wind a little bit as well, which makes it really nice. So this is another option for you to come and chill out in, especially if you're an adult. And there's a bar as well, so make the most of your drinks package if you've got one. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform that helps you create your online website and grow your presence or business. The best feature is that you can do everything in one place. But we also love the fantastic customer service, templates that can be customized till your heart's content, and analytic features to help grow your website. Best of all, it's so easy to do. No design experience or coding skills are needed. You can put together professional pages in just minutes. It doesn't matter if you have a blog, shop, or want to create your portfolio. Squarespace has you covered. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash Ben and David to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Oh, so we came back into the room just to check our video progress. I'm just uploading our brand new celebrity video and it is taking forever to upload. Oh my God, it's taking about two days. Even though the brand new Starlink internet is pretty good when watching things and surfing the web and stuff for uploading, oh my gosh, it is so slow. It's as slow as other cruise lines with much worse internet. But one thing also that we need to do because we've been away for like two and a half weeks is do some laundry. So it's about $25 a bag and we get $10 off because we're diamond members with the loyalty club. So it's only $15, but look at this guys. It's a, the, the purpose you do this, it's a blooming paper bag so that you can't overfill it because it will split if you do try and overfill it. And it is literally 
so delicate it's ridiculous but it's our only option so because unfortunately Royal Caribbean ships do not have a laundry on board so keep that in mind. Uh, you can wash um, your socks and underwear in the sink but let's see how much stuff we get in here guys. We're just trying to wash the basics so things like um, shirts and t-shirts and a few pairs of shorts just the stuff that we're going to wear every day there we go so actually we did get quite a lot in you just have to be very very careful how you pack it because it can get broken very easily so we made a quick change for dinner after all of those activities and we came down really quickly to the pub to do some more trivia it is so so busy sorry i'm talking really loud and really fast so we don't get a copyright strike all american questions though so we didn't have a blooming chance we got six out of 15 how bad is that? What's the flower of the state of Texas? I've got no bloody idea, guys. I'm from blooming the northeast of England, from a little town there. Anyway, we're gonna go and find out what else we can do on board. There's lots to do. Great thing about this ship, it has so much to do and see. There's actually 23 different bars on board, including the amazing Bionic Bar with its robot bartenders. What's great is if you have the drinks package, the Bionic Bar is included. That's fantastic. Other cruise lines don't allow this, like MSC. You can't use the drinks package on their Bionic Bar. But here on Royal, your drinks package you can use. Diamond vouchers you cannot use. You can only use them in the bars and restaurants. So we've been on the ship three days so far, and this is the first time we've came to the very back of the ship to an area called the Boardwalk. This is one of the different neighborhoods on board. And it's awesome. There's a carousel, there's games an arcade, there's the Boardwalk Doghouse, which is really cool. There's a sweetie shop. Oh, and there's also Johnny Rockets as well, which is really cool. But where we're going, somewhere different. We're heading to Playmakers. It's like a pub with pub food. It is an extra charge, but it's not too much money for the food there. And we really love the food there. So come on, let's go grab some food, shall we? Quite nice and warm tonight as well. So it's really nice to sit outside again. So welcome to Playmakers. We've decided to sit outside. Um, we're gonna try and film it because we did want to sit inside, but they are blasting out music. And out here, they are blasting out the movie Minions in the background and it's super obnoxious. I sound like an absolute granddad. And we are more aware of it because we are trying to film. But we have realized there's not any quiet spaces on this ship. And also, imagine if this was your balcony right behind me. It is so loud in here. Yeah, guys, we love music and everything as much as the other person, but if you just want to chill out on a sea day, read a book, sit somewhere comfy, it's really, really difficult on this ship, even on the top decks. For this particular cruise, we haven't really seen it anywhere else before, but they are blasting out music and everything everywhere, which is really annoying. And it's very hard to film, it really is. So a lot of this might have to be voiced over as well if we can't film it properly because they're blasting out a movie and music at the same time. So we've moved inside now just because we weren't getting served outside. We sat outside for about 20 minutes with nothing. So we've came in here and we've been sat about 15 minutes so far. It's absolutely dead and we're just still waiting for a menu. I'm gonna to have to go ask for one in a minute, which is a bit bad. So the service so far on this cruise hasn't been great. We've noticed that there is a lot of new crew, but that isn't an excuse. We've had a lot of new crew on other ships as well. So fingers crossed we get served anytime this century because we do have hairspray in a few hours and we want to get there nice and early for that so we get good seats. So really looking forward to the food here as well because the food's fabulous it's my type of food so we'll see how long it takes finally got the menus and we're served after 35 minutes and like ben said it's not even busy in here don't know what's going on the crew seem off they all seem very unhappy we're always very perceptive of a happy crew and something's not right at the moment so we finished our meal in playmakers to be honest it was hit and miss the food was fine the whole bill was only $27 after tax, which isn't too bad, and gratuity on there as well. But um, the service was a bit lacklustre again. We've been noticing it's been very, very slow. So not only was it very slow to get served, never came back to us to ask if the food was okay. Never asked if we wanted a refill of drinks because we didn't see our waiter again till about 10 minutes after we finished our food as well. And we took our time as well. So we were sat with no drinks or anything. So. I don't know what's going on because it is so, so quiet in there as well. So it wasn't like they were pushed with lots of tables or anything. Maybe it's just a new crew again. But hey, hopefully it gets a little bit better. The night is young and it's almost hairspray time. I'm super excited. We do love the boardwalk on these ships. There is so much to do on here and so much to keep everybody entertained from the little ones all the way up to adults. 
you've got the ultimate abyss which is a 260 foot dry slide yes you slide all the way from the very top of the ship all the way down here to the boardwalk funnily we've just seen people doing it in formal suits as well so it's for anybody of any age plus you've got the rock climbing walls there super fun you've also got the aqua theater which has spectacular water shows with acrobats all sorts of tricks there as well unfortunately on this ceiling we still haven't seen it it has been cancelled every single night just because it is so bumpy so sometimes they do have to cancel it and reschedule for another time because of bad weather there's lots of shops there's an arcade on here plus playmakers which you've just seen us have dinner at as well there's also Johnny Rockets, which is an extra charge restaurant, except for breakfast. Little tip here, Johnny Rockets at breakfast is complimentary. Another thing that's complimentary is the carousel. Fun for all ages. It's open most of the time throughout the day. And it's a cute little carousel ride in the right in the middle of the boardwalk. The carousel on a cruise ship, absolutely crazy. I mean, isn't that just a spectacular view? That sunset is gorgeous and the weather is really perfect tonight. It was a little bit chilly up on deck, but when you're down here, you are shaded from any wind, but we are moving a lot. I can see the clouds going up and down, which is really crazy. Much more movement on this ship than I thought there would be. We've been on this ship a few times, this class of ship anyway, not Symphony in particular. But yeah, it's usually a very steady, stable ship, but on the transatlantic, being quite busy. But I could just look at that sunset for hours. It's just beautiful, oh my God. Yeah, as you saw, we just ate in Playmakers, but there is over 20 different places to eat on this ship. It really is quite insane, it's nuts. There's the main dining rooms and the buffet, which are all included. Then there's lots of lighter places to eat as well, which are complimentary, like El Taco Fresh, the Cafe Promenade, Park Cafe on Central Park, and many, many more. Then there's over 10 specialty restaurants on board as well. These all come at an extra cost, so there is so much choice when it comes to food. You're not gonna get sick of food. There's everything from Italian to different themed nights in the main dining room every night. On our last episode, we talked about all of the new main dining room menus, because Royal have ripped up the old ones and created new themed menus for each night of your cruise. So if you haven't watched that yet, make sure you go watch our last video. Super interesting with all of the brand new food. Now you've heard us mention it previously in the vlog, but one thing again that we are really disappointed with is the lack of seating in some of the venues. And especially because they're putting a lot of their popular activities on in these venues. For example, the trivia so this ship holds over 5,000 people and trivia has been held in the on-air bar which holds about 50 people. Even today we went to Dazzles for the progressive trivia and there was no seats, people were sitting on the floor, there's just not enough room in the venues for the size of ship. David are you wobbling because I can just feel the whole ship wobbling right here, it's, it's really funny. I've I feel like jello. Free, I've got a free massage. <laughs> Oh, do you remember uh, the... I, I feel like I'm in the 80s on one of those wobble boards that was supposed to help you lose weight. Yeah, I know your voice is even shaking, it's hilarious. Now on a regular cruise, this isn't as much of a problem because there isn't as many Diamond members on and Pinnacle members who all like to go to the trivia and stuff, but because it's a transatlantic cruise, it can get very, very busy, especially when the weather isn't nice outside as well. And with no ports for 10 days, people are looking for stuff to do. So if you're not on a transatlantic cruise, you can kind of ignore this information. It would just be nice if they held all of the trivia in bigger locations like Dazzles or maybe the main theater or Studio B, which is the ice arena as well. There are places on the ship which hold a lot more people and we all love our trivia and things. So it'd be nice to have some room and be able to sit down for once. Yeah, but a lot of the areas do feel very crowded if the weather isn't good up on deck. Now, if the weather is good up on deck, this ship holds its passengers really well and distributes everybody nice and evenly. So there's plenty of room for everybody. It might sound like we're mourning, but we're really not. We do love Royal Caribbean. We love it a lot. We cruise with them more than any other cruise line. We're just pointing out the things for you that could go wrong so you're not disappointed. Anyway, we're always asked, why do we cruise transatlantics so many days at sea? Well, it's because we love days at sea. You can really chill out, relax, and disconnect from land. It's one of the best things ever. And little secret, they can be super cheap as well. So you can get longer, cheaper cruises in better cabins for much cheaper than say cruises around the Caribbean or Europe. So it's another good reason as well. Plus you can raise your loyalty points with the cruise line 
faster, which is really fantastic. So when you become diamond, you can get four free drink drinks a day, which is really fantastic. It's our first diamond cruise. I know we've mentioned it like a thousand times, but it's great. We get eight drinks a day between us for free which is awesome. And another unique way as well, like us, it was just as cheap as flying and we don't have to take that long flight across the pond back to the UK, which is really fantastic. And we've even just met somebody in the elevator who's moving from the US to Spain and they've got all the bags and stuff on here. It must be cheaper than all of that excess luggage on a plane. How funny is that? Oh, I am so excited. The time has finally come. We're gonna get to go watch Hairspray. This is one of the most amazing things about Royal Caribbean. On the other Oasis class ships, so on Oasis of the Seas you've got Cats, Allure of the Seas you've got Mamma Mia, on Harmony of the Seas you have Greece, and then on Wonder of the Seas there is no Broadway production show. So we hope this isn't a continuing theme because on the new Odyssey of the Seas as well there's no Broadway show on that as well, it's just uh, original production shows. So we do hope we get to see more Broadway slash West End style shows here on the Oasis class ships and future Royal Caribbean ships because it's one of the big pulls for us, it is really amazing. We're going to get to watch basically the whole show, it's an hour and a half long so let's waste no more time and see what Hairspray is all about because you can't stop the beat. That show is so fun and so well done. The cast were fantastic. And as Ben said before we went in, it's the full length production. Fun little fact, this is this cast's last showing of Hairspray. We're gonna get a new cast when we arrive in Europe. So it's nice to see, it's a little farewell for them. It was absolutely packed as well, so do make sure you do make reservations because it did fill up and people got there early to grab the good spots. Yeah, reservations are a must because all three shows on board have sold out. But if you get there 10 minutes before, the doors do open for everybody else as well because there will be some spare seats. People do cancel, so if you don't have a reservation, don't worry. Get there at least 10 minutes before, then they open the doors for everybody. This is the great thing because on land, those shows are so, so expensive. So it's such added value on a cruise when you get a great Broadway show like that. Oh, brilliant. Enjoyed every minute of it. So one of your best friends here on Royal Caribbean and your personal planner is on your phone. Now I know some people don't like using their phone on vacation, but if you want to get the most out of a Royal Caribbean cruise, you really do need to download the app. Do remember that connecting to the Wi-Fi just to use the app is completely free, so you don't need to pay anything extra. And what's great about it is that you can have a look at the daily planner. That's what you're going to use it most for. So you can have a look exactly what's going on around the ship. And then if you like the look of something, you can add it to your calendar so that you're reminded 30 minutes before it starts, which is really good so you don't forget doing anything. Also on here, like we mentioned in our last episode, you can book everything from shore excursions to entertainment to dining as well. We're super surprised on this cruise. Half of the dining is completely sold out. You can even have a look at your account as well, which is great. So you can see how much you've spent. It is absolutely needed. Little tip here is if something is sold out, like a restaurant, for example, that you are wanting to do, keep checking the app because people do cancel. You do get charged if you don't turn up to your reservation, so you may find 24 hours before reservations do become available as more and more people cancel. So that's another great thing about having the app. You can just keep checking throughout the day to see if anything does become available. Another great thing on Transatlantics is that you do get some really unique activities and entertainment. Things like meet the crew and how the ship works and all of that jazz. Just because there's so much time at sea, they need to do more activities to keep everybody occupied, especially when the weather isn't great outside. Unfortunately, our cruise is coming to an end and I thought I would just sum up what it's been like in terms of entertainment crew things to do all of that jazz because it has been a bit of an epic one overall the entertainment has been okay but lackluster in a lot of parts the actual entertainment that's been on has been very good but there's been days two three days together where there hasn't been much on at all so the big shows like hairspray in the main theater the shows in the ice arena as well as the aqua theater have all been really fantastic but other than that it's all been very much lacklustre with not much going on for lots of the time. And one thing that we've noticed is that overall the entertainment is skewed very, very old, especially for Royal Caribbean. This is a family cruise line with lots of young people on. The passengers on board this ship are an even mix of younger people, older people, families and all in between. 
but we found that it's skewed like it's a, a princess ship or something even older like Holland America or something like that which we should have which we would imagine all of the questions in the trivia have been incredibly old so we did a blockbuster quiz this afternoon all of the questions were from like the 1940s the 1920s same for a musicals quiz as well so it hasn't been enjoyable to do things like trivia we're massive trivia fans but we've simply been out aged in all of the trivia it's so so old i feel like i'm on a old creaky cruise ship another thing which hasn't helped either is the cruise director gosh guys i don't know how to put this politely we're not going to name him say who he is or what he's done on the ship but he's a bit arrogant he's not the usual cruise director type that we usually find here on royal caribbean we've seen him be a little bit arrogant to some people as well his own staff as well as some passengers on board who he snapped at he feels like that old uncle that you have who gets a bit grumpy now and again he's not the right person to be on a royal caribbean ship in our opinion we've done so many of these now we know what a good cruise director is ah oh, so we're back in the room we've had a really good cruise here on symphony of the seas for the transatlantic it has had its bad points as well with some of the service which has been a little bit slow and a little bit lackluster but you know what that happens on ships all of the time we do seriously love sailing with royal caribbean it's why we're diamond members if you want to help us a little bit more we'd really appreciate if you hit that subscribe button it does really help get our videos out to you big thank you as well to our patreon in return for joining our crew you receive little extra benefits such as behind the scenes videos you also receive all our videos completely advert free and we upload them early as well plus we do a monthly zoom chat with which is always a lot of fun so that's it till next time happy, happy cruising, cruising.